The church's nickname is the Cathedral of the Plains. It has never been a cathedral because no Catholic bishop has ever been in residence here. It got its name from a politician. In 1912, William Jennings Bryan was touring the country. He was running for the presidency of the United States. Stopped in Victoria, saw the church, and gave it the Cathedral of the Plains, which the name has stuck to this very day. Okay? Um, the church is now a minor basilica, named so by the Vatican's Office of Divine Worship and something to do with the sacraments. I forgot the last part of the name. Um, but it's an office in the Vatican who de designated it in February of this year as a minor basilica, uh, but that only was designated at, uh, upon application. So a prior priest here put an application together that took six months, submitted to the Vatican, and it took less than five months for the Vatican to make the decision when they were told um, that it could take up to three years. Victoria was originally settled by the British in 1873. They wanted to be gentlemen farmers. Uh, so they came here not realizing the weather and the climate in here. <laughs> if you've ever been to England, this is much different than um, England. It gets much hotter and much colder than it does in England. And so um, they could not handle it. So they, they settled Victoria in 1873, named it after their queen, thus the name Victoria. Okay. Then in 1876, the Germans from Russia started arriving. Now they settled in a little place near here, which no longer exists. They named the settlement Herzog after a town in Russia. Okay. And so what happened was at some point uh, after the Germans started arriving, the British decided they could no longer tolerate the weather conditions here and left. The Germans then abandoned their settlement and moved into Victoria, taking it over. Okay. When they first arrived here, the statue across the street from the parking lot, kind of catacornered to the northwest, is what they did. They put a cross in the center of town and they gathered on Sundays to say their prayers and the rosary because they had no full-time priest. Now this church is actually the fourth church that they built in succession. They kept building larger churches. The other three churches no longer exist. And in fact, the third church was actually on this site because it was land donated by a railroad company to the parish for religious purposes. That church seated 600 people. They tore it down to build this, which seats 1,100. Okay. They used the stone from that church on the interior of this church. They quarried all of the rock on the outside of the church from a quarry about seven miles from here, near Vincent. And they, it is thought that they quarried about 125,000 cubic feet. The two spires that are seen from the interstate are 141 feet tall. The crosses on top are 12 feet high. In that spire, the south one, there are four bells, three of which probably would have come from the, from the third church here. Uh, those, those weigh, I have to think of it, two, 275, 575, and 1,300 pounds. There is an additional bell in there that was, that was cast in 1929, uh, and that bell was 2,000 pounds. Wow. All of them were cast in St. Louis, Missouri. All right. Now you come on the interior of the church, and what you have is that you have items both not only from the United States and Kansas. For instance, these pews are from Kansas, but were not put in until 1950. Uh, so you have items in the church that came from parts of the United States as well as from Europe. For instance, the 14 octagon and round pillars are granite from the state of Vermont. They each, they're in excess of 10 feet in height, and they each weigh 8,500 pounds. Okay. They were brought in by the railroad, so the parishioners had to get those from the railroad to here, which the railroad's a little less than a mile away. They tried putting one of these on a, on a regular wood wagon. It crushed it. So they came up with the idea of using a threshing machine. A threshing machine is the predecessor to the modern day combine. It would have been made out of metal. Somehow they reconverted it into a wagon, reinforcing its axles, and that's how they hauled each of these pillars up here. Now the bottom and the top of the pillars and some of the wood, some of the stone in the archway are those, uh, a stone came from the state of Indiana. You see four square pillars in the sanctuary. The two outside ones are cement with four inch granite veneer. The two, the two inner ones are just granite veneer around the stone of the church. Okay. 
what you have is you have 14 stations of the cross. Those were made in Austria of something called linden wood. The windows like this that are made are usually fired many times and that's, I guess, that's what gives the color in the stained glass its deep hue so that the colors last for a very long time. There are 44 stained glass windows in the church. The bottom ones contain biblical scenes. The top ones contain symbols of the church, of various things. For instance, on that side there are the symbols of the four men who wrote the gospel. That would have been the bull, the lion, the man, the eagle. Uh, on this side there's a symbol of, the, of, what, of what a bishop is, uh, what a bishop usually is, and also the symbol of the pope, which is usually the king, keys to the king that St. Peter had. Uh, included in the stained glass windows are three rose windows. That rose window is that of St. Cecilia, who's the patroness of music. It's 13 feet in diameter, and the two here are 9 feet in diameter. That contains uh, saints of the Capuchin and Franciscan order. These are saints of the Catholic Church, represent the kings and saints of the Catholic Church who are patrons of the youth. Uh, the middle one is St. Gonzaga, as well as that statue here. Now, the stained glass windows were not put in until six, excuse me, five years after the church was constructed. Um, I saw a little brochure that indicated um, the prices of everything this would have been about the time the church was finished. It was in 1911, so it was used for the dedication of the church. And so the, the debt on the church, I added up what they had in there. The debt on the church was over $70,000 for the building. So they waited about five years to put in the stained glass windows. Okay? The stained glass windows we know were made in Chicago. There's been debate about that. But the reason we know that they're made in Chicago is that they're signed. Six of them have the name of the company who made them still etched in them that you can read. And I'll show you those in a few minutes. They're made by a company in Chicago called the Munich Studio. The people who worked for that company were trained in Germany how to make windows. As far as we know, the windows have never been retouched. Now, I understand there was one broken at one time and it was repaired, but as far as retouching any of this, to our knowledge, it, they, it's original. they're original. Now, the light fixtures that you see were put in in 1948 and they're also known as, as Romanesque style light fixtures. I have no idea where they got them, but it's really interesting that they were able to find one that matched the style of the church that's made. The sanctuary contains six altars. Only one of them is marble. The rest are all wood painted to look like marble. Okay, so the one, the center one, which was put in in 1986, the lower one. Okay, 1986, and it was put on at the 75th anniversary of the church, the dedication of it, and the ambo, or you may know it's the pulpit, but the technical name. It's the end of where, where the gospel is proclaimed, the hum is always given. Um, that was donated in 1954 by a priest who was a son of this parish. Both of those items came from the same quarry in Italy. Okay. Now, I, I indicated the other five altars are wood painted to look like marble, as well as the bottom of the communion rail. The communion top of it has, a, has a, some stone in it, but the rest of it's all wood. Right? So, and actually, the two inner side altars were actually carved by a parishioner at the time the church was constructed. Okay, his name is Lindenberger. There's information on him right by the men's bathroom. There's a framed picture. There's a, fr a framed portrait. It's a picture of him with a little history about him. He was known as a carpenter and stonemason. So, um, he would have made those. The other altars, I'm assuming, would have come from the third church. That main altar is 1892, so that was made in Cincinnati, so that definitely would have come from the third church. Mm -hmm.